So there's been some big Sony news this week. The pretty, I guess, polarizing uh, reporter Jason Schreier from Bloomberg reported about some pretty big issues, it seems, going on within Sony and PlayStation. Uh, there's a sort of, David, there's like a, it's like a bit of a partner team that helps work on the end results of major games like Uncharted, Last of Us, God of War, things like that, where they kind of come in and do the polish-offs, they fix some things up, and that team has sort of come out with some issues that have been going on because they've wanted to make their own games, they've wanted to do their own thing, uh, and that's caused some issues, some people leaving, some things like that, when really they've just been used as, hey, you need to polish off this, you're just working on remakes, you're just doing this, and it's caused a lot of news. So there's probably three major points that have come out of this. One is that uh, the team that made Days Gone, the PlayStation exclusive that came out in 2019, which was pretty well received and made a bit of money, but there were some issues with development. They wanted to make a sequel to that game. They got turned down. So that's some big news coming out of there that Days Gone's not getting a sequel and PlayStation don't see it as viable because it had so many issues in development. It wasn't critically acclaimed like a God of War, or Horizon Zero Dawn, or a Last of Us Part Two. So there's some issues there. Okay, Days Gone, not getting a sequel. Days Gone is gone. Days Gone, it's gone. Forget. Yeah, it. I never Forget played it, but I had some mates. Like they're not like like full on gamers, but they had some had some mates that mm. that really fucking enjoyed it, man. It's. It's not a game I play. It's like the only Sony exclusive I don't think I play. You don't play zombie games, though. You no, only The Last zombie, of Us. You, really. you hate zombie games. I hate zombie games. But is The Last of Us a zombie game, or is it a game about human beings being the true evil ones? I agree with that, it's, at least with the second one. Yeah. Um, I thought... The, everyone For told sure. me that about the first one, and then I played the first one, and I was like, hey, look, it is that, but it's also definitely a zombie game. It's definitely. Because I felt yeah. like two had a lot more human elements to it but it also did zombies in this in a way that made me actually enjoy it for the first i never enjoyed the zombie side of a zombie game before um until the last was part two i released mm. like day three ellie like that's perfection to me that was like i was genuinely scared i was like holy shit this is incredible so that's probably why i've ordered days gone but I know a lot of people that loved it too. A lot of people that said it was a great game, or at least it had a lot of potential, and they wanted to see it develop. But maybe a sequel w would give them the opportunity to grow the story, grow the world, and fix up those issues. That when it comes to making a new original game, there's a lot of things that can go wrong, and sometimes you have those development issues, and that's what Sony, I guess, didn't like, uh, and they don't want to do a sequel. Whereas maybe a sequel could have been a lot smoother. You don't know. Um, I'm not the inside person, but sad news to see that. Another big piece of news is that there's a team, and this is that like visual arts team that does like the polishing of all these other games. They are working on, or at least were working on, a remake, David, of The Last of Us 1. A full remake? Like a full remake of a game that's eight years old that's already been remastered on the last generation of console for the PlayStation 5 that they could like bundle up with Last of Us Part 2 and release. And... I just don't understand the thought process of this. The article talks about how they were originally supposed to remake Uncharted 1, which came in 2007. A lot more... A, a lot more reason to do a remake with a game that mechanically you go back and replay, and it feels like it's a 14-year-old game. It does. It's an amazing game, but it feels like a 14-year-old game. A lot more you can add and develop with that. It would be amazing to see a remake of Uncharted 1. But the way PlayStation's looking at it... And this is the big root of the article, and, and the big root of the problem is PlayStation's so focused, it seems like, on their blockbuster franchises and their blockbuster studios, and that's it. They're not really worried about the smaller games anymore. They're not really worried about those indie games or even new originals. They're just like, look, these are the studios we trust to make. If they want to make an original, they can make a new IP, but that's about it. And other than that, we want sequels to their big games, like Gorilla making a sequel to Horizon, um, Sony Santa Monica making the next God of War, Naughty Dog working on A Last of Us, an Uncharted game, as well as if they want to make a new IP, go for it. Naughty Dog, uh, in the article, it describes them as like a key studio, which makes sense. I get it. But you have had some incredible new IPs that came in the generation of the PS4, including Ghost of Tsushima, just to name one. Obviously, Horizon Zero Dawn being another. But to not focus on and give time to those smaller games also negates the opportunity for growth. And what I mean by that is for new 
things to come up that surprise Sony and that surprise audiences that can only come from those smaller studios. And it doesn't mean necessarily small as like they're indie, but they don't have the budgets of a Last of Us Part Two. They don't have hundreds of millions of dollars of budget, you know? But they can still make an incredible game. They can still do something that surprises everyone. That's like, oh my god, wow, I didn't know I wanted this style, but this is something new, this is something refreshing, and I want to see more. And that opportunity becomes less and less and less through Sony if their focus is only on their blockbuster games. But the other problem is, is their seeming focus on remakes and remasters of old games rather than new games anyway. They would rather make a Last of Us Part 1 remake than make a new IP. From a studio they've at least trusted to work on a lot of their important projects and polish off a lot of their big games that have come out over the last 10 to 15 years. It's just strange to me to read about that and to see that that's the direction PlayStation are going. That they're almost... It's the first time I feel like Sony are like so high on their horse about what, what position they're in, the confidence they have. They're like, we, we know we're going to sell our consoles by doing this and we're just going to stick to that rather than... What got them there really was investing in a lot of studios in a lot of new ideas. Trying new things. Yes, some sequels to franchises we know, but trying new things with those sequels. God of War for the PS4 was not the same as God of War 1, 2, and 3. You know, and, that, and that's why it's so critically acclaimed. Not just because it's a sequel to a very popular franchise. And The Last of Us Part 2 is very polarizing, but it tried something completely different and like it or not, it was fucking talked about endlessly. It's still talked about and it sold insanely well. And it was well produced as well. It was a well, very well polished, well made game. So Sony don't know what they're doing in that sense. And then you've got Microsoft that are just sort of putting out all these other smaller... They, they don't seem like they have anything massive other than a Halo that comes. They just want to purchase a lot of studios, use Game Pass, and have a lot of access to a lot of different smaller to medium games. And that's where Xbox are going. And it seems like they're doing a pretty good job of that. Good for them. Happy for them. We'll see how it goes. Only time will tell with Microsoft. But Sony, I'm like, well, just keep doing what you're doing. And now it's like, they're like, no, let's pull it back a bit. Just have those small key games that are going to come out once a year, once every couple of years. Or maybe one of those games per year, two of those games a year at most. And then you've got something like this studio remaking The Last of Us. I just don't understand. Dave, why would you remake The Last of Us 1, man? Then the reason they chose that over Uncharted one was because they're like, oh, you've got to change too much with Uncharted. You've got to add too much. It's a lot cheaper and more affordable to just remake a game like The Last of Us. There's not that much you need to do and we're going to still sell a lot. We'll bring in old fans for nostalgia on the PS5 and bring in new curious fans. Like, I just feel like it's an eight-year-old game that's already been remastered. Like, that's why? my thing is like, pick one. Pick one. You pick a remaster or you pick a remake. That's why Demon Souls was such a big deal. It's because it's like it's was it was like a what a, the game's over like fifteen years old or whatever. Yeah. And then it's like you have that, and then you have a full remake. Um, that's just everyone froths over, not like a, um, you know, like an obvious cash grab, which this seems to be, you know. Yeah, and well, that's but that's one. what it is. It's it it becomes, the cash grab, which is I, I didn't I certainly don't think Sony's above that. I just thought their direction was about bringing brilliant exclusives to their audience. And that's what's going to sell the PS5. And I think that's what they think they're doing. But I feel like they think they've already done the hard work. Like, they're like, we've already done that. Now we can just sort of cut costs back, do things for less, and still get the same return because we've already established this reputation with these studios making these types of games. And that's so short-sighted to me. That's money grabbing. That's money saving. That's not a long-term sustainable way to do their business. If they're trying to save money for two to three years, okay, sure. But at what cost? You know, at what cost? You'll remember because you consistently, during the PS4 era, put out amazing new exclusive titles. Frequently. Some were well-received more than others, sure. Some are more polarizing than others, but everyone took them seriously. And that's and that's the key. And that's the key. Everyone took them seriously. So I'm a bit concerned with where they're going with that, with with the focus on the blockbusters, but also seemingly like pulling back from what, what got them to the dance, David. What got them to the dance 
uh, was trying crazy shit. And I feel like they're now playing it safe. And I, I worry that they're getting complacent. And I've been worried about that for years, but they've given me no reason to. I was just like, oh, I wonder when that'll happen. I feel like it's only natural. Like, surely they'll get complacent and they'll think they can just do whatever they want. But I thought it meant they would take some really big risks, not pull back and play it safe. Because you can go one of two ways when you're in this position is keep doing what you're doing usually doesn't happen, especially when there's a new head of PlayStation that came in at the end of 2019. Usually those new bosses, they want to make an impact. They want to make a change. And the change could be, no, we're going to take even bigger risks because we're in this position, which could pay off hugely or not but it's it's i respect that a lot more than playing it super safe because ah oh, we need to save money on the budget while still making a whole lot of money as well by reusing and recycling old ideas and it just sounds like there's quite a few people within the you know PlayStation Empire the work as a developer that that just that aren't happy you know a lot of people at Ben Studios that were actually the May Days gone were actually brought in to help Naughty Dog make an uncharted and now they've got their own, they asked to get taken off it. They're on their own project, but a lot of developers have been leaving. So it's a bit, it's a bit concerning when you're losing some really key developers on teams that got you there. And who knows where they're going? They probably don't want to work with Sony anymore. That's that's, that's sad. Well, it's worrying because it it um, indicates that the marketing team thinks graphics <coughs> sells games where like ah, great point you know and it's like well no like the last of us part one you could play the remaster you could play the original you could play a, a remake um people come back to see joel and ellie you know and and graphics i don't know in a, in a generation that is saturated with the highest visual effects it it honestly th- there's only a certain level of of clarity and and precision and and graphical you know amazingness until you just go well what am i what am i really connecting to here you're connecting to a story you yeah. Know? yeah and that that's worrying you know they could just go if, if we can just rehash old things again and again um nothing new is being nothing new is being um, investigated because sometimes a game might not seem like a triple a hit or uh, it seems like it's going to take off but then it gets out there and it just hits a market that is untapped, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely it, right. Uh, it, it says it here in the article, uh, which I found really interesting. <clears throat> Emphasizing big, hit, big hits can also be counterproductive because sometimes games that start small can turn into massive successes. Exactly. In 2020, Sony didn't put, put much marketing muscle behind the quirky video game creation system Dreams, but the PlayStation-owned Media Molecule in the UK... Uh, but by by uh, media, media molecule in the UK. As a result, PlayStation may have missed out on its own version of Roblox, a similar video game tool. Parent company Roblox Corp went public earlier this year and is now valued at forty five billion dollars. Mm. Dude, Dreams is, an, is is incredible, by the way. Yeah. People people creating all kinds of amazing stuff on there. So it just goes to show, like they just think that that. I mean, it, it just it also seems like a fearful. You know, it just seems like like they're just too afraid to to um. Which I don't get why. Yeah. I, don't, I just don't get why. They've got everything going for them. They can take some risks. Sony can take some risks, um, man. I mean, I'd, I'd be interested to see their financials. Like, like okay, they've made all these amazing games. They've sold so many consoles. I, you, you, And I guess from that and how well they're doing, you, you assume there's a lot of profit being made. But are they spending more than they're, you know, getting in terms of these other projects? And is there, like, a background cost? There's always a background reason for this. And... and you know, a new having a new boss in PlayStation makes me concerned that he's trying to get results for the. Um, he's trying to make his mark as the new boss. You know what I mean? And he's trying to show percentage improvements and results in growth every year. And that's the problem with some of these bigger companies. It can be, especially with new bosses, if they're really drunk the Kool Aid. And he used to be the head of Gorilla, so I don't know. I who knows? I I I've got my concerns, Dave. That's all I'm saying. I've got my concerns with their focus on blockbusters. I was waiting for this to happen. I was worried this would happen. Our PlayStation getting complacent. Again, this is one report from Jason Trier. We've just got to wait and see until things start getting announced. What this um, Ben Studios project is, as well as does a Last of Us remake get announced soon? And then we're like, what the fuck is this? So. It's, it's a matter of time. Perhaps it's a 10-year anniversary remake. That's what they're waiting for, for like 2023. But even then, 10 years is what you do for a remaster, not a remake. It's just too much. It's too soon and it just feels wrong. Make a new Last of Us. Make a new IP through Naughty Dog or make a new Uncharted. Like, don't 
you don't need to remake The Last of Us. You just don't. You don't even need to re- remake the first Uncharted, but that's the only one that would even make sense. That's that's my two cents anyway. That's my two cents. Yeah. 